Hey, Mike Barter here once again. Um, you know what? In this edition of Climbing Tools, we are going to step it up a notch or two. Uh, for those of you who already pretty much know what you're doing and you'd like another exercise, remember we did the crevasse rescue or avoiding the void exercise. Um, now we're going to do a counterbalance carry. And a counterbalance carry is kind of like well, it's one of the mandatory exam things, so if any of you are thinking of doing your guide things, you better have this thing down. But um, it has a fairly stiff entrance level too, so you're going to have to know how to belay, you're going to have to know how to repel, um, hook up a prussic cord, a munter hitch, how to tie off a munter hitch efficiently, and not, not just like fumble around with it, really know how to do it. And then uh, know how to back up your rappel. And then we're going to do a combination of all these things and deal with the worst case scenario where, you know, you're bringing up your partner and he gets hit by rock fall, he's unconscious, and you have to get down to him right away. And then you want to take him down to some place where uh, you can administer more first aid or um, get him held you back from instead of just leave him hanging on the side of a cliff. Uh, the key thing is here, if you look at how much weight is on it and the, the bit of bouncing, your anchor absolutely has to be bomb-proof. And we already, we've discussed bomb-proof before. Anyhow, uh, this is the, uh, it's got a high entrance level, so give it a go. You might have to watch it a few times. Practice it in your gym. Practice it in an controlled environment. If you're doing it at a crag, if that's the only place you got to do it, Take an extra rope and hook it up so that your um, dead weight, your victim, if you don't have like an 80 kilo mass to hang off the end of the rope, then uh, that, you know, he's got a backup for that in case you screw up anything. Because you screw up anything, you're going to drop this guy, right? And then, if you're like me, I don't like paperwork, and that's what we're talking about here. That's sitting at the sheriff's office, your park official or whatever, and drinking bad coffee and talking to those guys for the rest of the night. So uh, here we go, Counterbalance Carry, uh, brought to you by Tom Wolf, a mountain guide here in uh, the Bow Valley, in close to Banff at Canmore. So I could, I did. Do you want me to explain why I'm moving? You better. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of ha hassle here about why I'm clipping into the single anchor point. Well, there's there's three reasons why I'm leaving it clipped into the single anchor point. First of all, we've got this thing epoxied in there that's probably rated for about 5,000 kilograms, which is significantly more than what I weigh. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, it's not like it's the only piece I got in. Say that 5,000 kilogram thing does fail. Well, I've got this other one that's probably rated for three or 4,000 kilograms, right? Uh, and okay, a shock load. Okay, okay. So it ends up being instead of you know my 200 pound weight, it ends up being like 400 pound weight or whatever. Okay, still have a good margin of safety there. And then the third reason is, it's just, it just looks nicer for camera. It's a lot more organized and easier. <laughs> <laughs> Today uh, to demonstrate the uh, counterbalance uh, repel in an, an emergency situation. And uh, so the question is, why would you want to go down in a counterbalance repel? There's um, you know, there's a couple of situations where you'd want to go down. Uh, you could be in the middle of a face where going up is just not a possibility if the person is injured. Uh, you know, taking them up even another 10 or 20 meters could be impossible. So going down is often the most expeditious route down. Why the counterbalance? Well, uh, if you're several pitches up, your rope simply won't stretch to the bottom. So you have to go down in multiple, multiple pitches, okay? Another, another reason why you might want to do a counterbalance, even if your rope is within hitting this striking distance of the ground, is uh, if they're injured and if the, if the terrain is rubbly or in, in uh, such a situation where you'd have to go down and help them over stuff or administer first aid or whatever. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might want to use a counterbalance. In any case, this is what we're showing you how to do. Okay, so uh, here we are on the mighty Rundle Rock, the very bottom of the west ridge of Mount Rundle, and Patrick is climbing. And he's climbing up, and uh, we're gonna simulate a situation where you might wanna use a counterbalance rappel, okay? So, all of a sudden, there's some rock fall. 
and Patrick gets struck by a rock and he gets knocked unconscious. Okay, so you can wait the rope. Okay, so as you can see, my munter is uh, is locked off. I look down, I see he's bleeding, he's he's unconscious, he's not able to climb, he's not able to help himself, and. Just for the sake of this scenario, we're going to say that Patrick is uh, is going to need a counterbalance repel to get out of the situation. Okay. First thing I need to do is escape the belay. I'm using a direct anchor belay, so it's extremely simple to escape the belay. All I have to do is lock it off, like so. Do a little backup using a fisherman's, and there you go. I can now let go of the rope, okay? He's completely locked off. All right, so uh, at this point, I'm gonna have to get rid of this whole mess here and turn it into a nice, clean uh, repelling system that will work for a counterbalance repel. So the first, thing to, the first step in any sort of cleanup procedure here is to uh, throw a prussic on, okay? So I take a long prussic, like a five meter, I think this is actually six or seven meter. It's pretty darn long. And uh, make a nice prussic knot. This is seven mil prussic and it's a ten and a half mil rope. So I'm going to do three wraps. Okay. Make sure that the prussic knot is dressed nice and cleanly. Like that. Test it out, make sure it doesn't slip. Okay, at this point, I can attach the prussic cord to a locking carabiner using a tied off munter. Okay, test the munter, make sure it works. Beautiful. Tie it off, like so. Again. Okay. All right, and then with the free rope, I back it up using clofitch, for example, or an overhand. I can also use the shelf up here if I'm getting too crowded out down there. Okay, good. It's all backed up. Okay, now I'm ready to release the load onto the prussic cord. Okay, first thing I do is I snug up the prussic, make sure there's not a whole lot of play in the system. Undo this. Using some care here to make sure it doesn't shock load everything. Good, and I release a little bit of rope out and weight my prussic. Everything's working as expected here good now you see i got a little bit of extra rope here okay this is why using the clofitch is not a bad idea so you can take a lot of the extra slack out like this okay and then free up one locking carabiner Actually, we're going to need an anchor to repel off, so I'll leave that there. And then you can attach that. So now we've just got a, this is going to be our smooth running uh, focal point for the repel. And then get myself set up for repel here. Okay. And then I have to put a backup on, right? It's an emergency situation. I'm going to have other things on my mind, just in case I happen to let go or need to let go, I will back it up. You can do that using, you know, Prusik here or a French Prusik if you've got one of those set up. I'll just do a, uh, probably a double wrap is enough for this. If you do a triple wrap, it's going to grip too hard and it's going to become awkward and a pain <coughs> to manage as you're coming down. And then probably shorten this up a little bit. And I'm using a, a single fisherman's here. Um, another knot that I often use is just a, 
and uh, an inline uh, overhand knot. It doesn't have to be very strong. Okay, good, perfect. Okay, so now I <clears throat> take in some of the slack here. I can. that yet and then I can remove this like so okay so then you can pull this off now and you can see the system is backed up first of all we get the prusset cord here holding the main weight but it's backed up by this hole by this whole thing with the uh, the rappel device and the the, the, the backup uh, prusset, personal prusset here Okay, so now I pull in the slack like this. I lean back heavily, make sure the system is all engaged. Okay. Maybe I should have used three wraps there after all. Okay, and then, uh, oops, not that one. And then I can release the load onto my weight here by releasing this a little bit. Good. And then undo this carabiner. Get rid of it. Readjust the length of this so that it's shorter than my arm span. Otherwise, it'll be hard to reach. Just tie a overhand on a couple of bites there, and clip that into a strong point on my harness and lock it off. Okay. Now I'm ready to organize and start going down. So let's take some of this rope here. Use a shorter rope. So, as you can see right now, it's my body weight that's holding him from going down. So, I have to keep quite a bit of weight on the rope in the harness. Throw that over, throw the rest of it over. Great, and then I can detach this. Bring that along, and I can start repelling. So I got two prusiks to manage right now. as they go over the edge. Yeah, and then I go down, look down, see where he is, get closer, be sure I don't knock any more rock down on him. And then, just as I'm getting close to him, I have to make sure that this prusik is snug. Okay? The reason for that is I want this prusik to start pulling him down. This is where the counterbalance comes in. You can see that prusik's pulling him down. The rope is sliding through my top anchor point. I'm right next to him, so I can help him and manage him if need be. If I want to be below him, I can slide this down like this, be below him for whatever reason. I could pull him out from this rock here. Or if I don't like that, I can lower him down a bit. down to the bottom and then if I was on a multi-pitch rappel I would set up another anchor here and continue on down except instead of using a counterbalance from that point on you'd use some kind of a two-person rappel system. Thank you for watching Mike Bardo.